judge agreed to a temporary injunction against the state's mandate. It says schools must open for face-to-face -face learning this month. A lot of schools have already started classes, so the question is, what does this all mean? News 6's Nadine Giannis has been following this case very closely. So, Nadine, what happens now? Well, the power is now back in the hands of the local school districts to decide when they feel it's safe to reopen, how to reopen, and when they want to reopen. This after a judge in Tallahassee ruled that the emergency order that forces schools to open five days a week, the judge says, quote, disregards safety. It also threatens to lose funding and takes away the power from the school districts, and he ruled that emergency order unconstitutional. I am so happy and so proud of you for helping us. Um, I just can't believe it, man. We were there for this exchange between Gateway High School teacher Andre Escobar and his attorneys reacting to an historic decision made by a Tallahassee judge today. Uh, very excited and, and happy that it happened. Ruling the July 6 emergency order by Education Commissioner Richard Corcoran and backed by Governor Ron DeSantis that all schools must reopen brick and mortar five days a week is unconstitutional. Orlando attorney Billy Wheeland. And this is the state of Florida reduced the constitutional guarantee of safe education to an empty promise in violation of the Florida Constitution. I mean, that's right there in the order, and that's what our case was all about. Meaning the judge ruled the state cannot order all 67 counties to reopen schools. It also says teachers are not allowed to be fired if they don't feel safe to come back. Hopefully the districts will do the right thing uh, now that they have the power to. Escobar was one of those local faces of this lawsuit tried last week, testifying he is a high risk quadriplegic teacher forced to come back for the first day of school in person today. As of right now, we just have uh, a spray bottle and masks. Spending 100 of his own dollars to buy this plexiglass as PPE. All these school boards were forced to open by a certain date and they just, there wasn't enough time to prepare. We anticipate every county is going to have to have an emergency meeting tonight or tomorrow to decide whether or not they're going to keep schools open or reopen on time. I mean, it's truly remarkable. So what could this mean for your local district? We have reached to all school boards here in Central Florida to get their reaction. We're going to hear from Orange County Superintendent Barbara Jenkins on this at 7. Flagler and Marion County say as of right now, they will probably keep theirs as is. Seminole County's attorney is still looking into it. But the thing is, will the state appeal this? We just got a statement from Richard Corcoran who says that he is 100% confident in this lawsuit and they will continue to fight it. No word, though, if that means they will be appealing. We'll have much more at 7 o'clock. Guys, back to you. Nadine Giannis, thank you. And the judge's decision comes as kids across Central Florida head back to school. That includes schools in Brevard, Flagler, Lake, Marion, Osceola, and Sumter, who all started in both face-to-face, in-person learning today. Osceola Schools reported some technology issues, by the way. The district did not count anyone absent today, and it's asking families for some patience moving through this first week especially.